Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, instructor of the project. And thank you for joining us for another episode of the MDK Live Show. Today, I have a special guest, Mindy Kohner, who is the wife of a project graduate, Michael Kohner, who graduated class 007. Mindy, thank you for coming on and doing this interview with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Also, we're going to have some fun. We're going to ask you some tough questions about your experience and some dirt on Michael throughout the project. So we're going to have some fun here. So first off, just what, what did you first think of when or, or what were the thoughts going through your head when Michael first told you about the project and just explained to you what it was or maybe showed you videos of it? What were your first initial reactions? Uh, well, I had a little bit of sticker shock when he talked about the cost and um that it was a really expensive workout program. <laughs> and then um, the further that we talked about it, the more that he dove into it, the videos that he showed me, I realized that it was more of a brotherhood and that it was more about, um, you know, developing these relationships and um, making this life-changing um, motivational change in his life um, for a lifetime. It's not just, you know, that he went through it for 75 hours and then it's going to be for the next three months. It's for his entire life. And so whenever I looked at it from that perspective, the cost didn't seem so bad. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So when he first comes to you, he's like, yeah, I'm going to go roll around the mud with a bunch of guys for three days for $12,000. What do you think? Of course, your the initial reaction, because it's, it's hard to understand. And I tell men that all the time, it, that's a lot of times what the wives are going to think, you're just going to this, this workout, this fitness boot camp for three days when it's so much more than that. The fitness part is the probably the least part of the, of the project. So how did, how did that, that actually process look? How did he actually get your support? And, you know, what, then, then did he have your encouragement from that moment on? Or how did that whole conversation go to, for him to break through and, and kind of get your support of that? Well, he first told me that he read the man up book. Um, and that's how he kind of got involved with everything and then started, I think it was maybe you that were, was calling him and yeah. talking about the pricing and everything and, you know, what all was involved. And then he just kept telling me, I can't get this out of my head. I think this is really something that I need to do. I really feel it, um, you know, in my heart that I'm, I'm destined to go and do this. And so, um, yeah, I mean, so I go to school, I'm going to school for nursing, it's really expensive. And so if I, he can invest in me and my future, then why couldn't I support him and invest in him and his future? Uh, that's so awesome. that's kinda... Yeah, I love that. Love that. Good stuff. So what was it that you personally thought, all right, once you kind of, all right, you're on board with it, you're now supporting him, you're, you've, you've gotten over the, the thought of the price and realized how it is going to be a, a huge investment for, your, for him and for your, your relationship and your family's future. What what were some of the things that you think he specifically now you were like, all right, now that we're doing this, I hope you, he's going to get this out of it, whether you told him or not. What are some of the things you think he needed to kind of work on or was hoping he would achieve out of going through the project? This is where you get to really tell the tr truth. <laughs> so, I mean, I really didn't think that he needed to work on a lot. I mean, he was already a great husband. He was already a great dad. Like I said, he supports me. Um, you know, he cleans house. He does the dishes. <laughs> So there's, um, you know, all those things that he does to help me and, and our daughter. And um, I think that the main thing that he needed was the confidence. He needed to know that he could do this. He needed to have um, that understanding that he is able to accomplish anything that he sets his mind to. This was a, a big endeavor. This was something that was really scary for him. And um I think that he doubted himself whether he could do it. And so once he gained that confidence from the project, then now going to work or um, a challenge that he's facing, he knows that he has all of you guys' support that he can rely on, but also he knows within himself that he's strong enough to accomplish this because he went through all that he went through. So, I mean, Beforehand, I didn't think that he needed that confidence. I thought that he was doing great. But after and the changes that I saw in his demeanor, I was like, oh, that's what he was missing. So you kind of saw it afterwards. Because it sounds like, you know, you had a great relationship beforehand. He was already, he was washing the dishes. 
dishes. I can picture him in an apron there with doing the dishes, like kiss me on the house or something. Do the dishes. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to him about this one. Then we'll have a conversation so we can talk some crap to him. Yeah. So, no, but that's awesome. So it, it was a kind of a confidence thing. Kind of, he needed to have a, a personal challenge for himself. Like he probably had some, every, all of us, men, we, we don't admit it, but we have, we suffer in silence and have those self doubts and fears and uncertainties. Like how capable am I really? What really, what real potential do I really have in this world? Am I being the type of man I should be doing to the fullest potential? Is there more I have to give? And it sounds like those are some of the internal questions he had. Yeah. And you might not have even know he had those questions at the time, but it seems like he came up with those answers through the process. Is that kind of where we we're at? Yeah. I didn't even know that it's something that like, I, I didn't recognize that it was something that he even needed. Um, but his first job, um, you know, his first real job, I think that that boss kind of beat him down and didn't give him the confidence and support that he needed. And so that's something that has just traveled with him through his career. And now I think that that, that he's gained this newfound confidence in himself that that lingering doubt is no longer in his mind. And now when you think back to the, the sticker shock that you said you had and the now outcome that you're seeing that you didn't even know existed, I don't want to say a problem, but just the things that were going on you didn't know existed. That makes it be just pennies compared to the things you just explained that he's now had, kind of those oh, yeah. breakthroughs that he's had. Completely, completely worth it. That, that's that, that is awesome. So, so now let's talk about while he's actually there. He's away at the project. Have has there been times when he was gone like that for days at a time before, or what, what was going through your head? What was that experience like when he was away, especially doing something so kind of chaotic and uncertain and scary as the project? Yeah. So he's been away. Um, he's gone on trips, but I've always been able to talk to him, <laughs> and. Um, so him being away for 75 hours without me having any contact with him, the grueling um, experience that he was going through, not knowing what he was going through, was he still there? Did he, was he being successful? Was he failing? You know, all the questions that were going through my mind, did he get hurt? I, that was the longest 75 hours of my life thus far, including childbirth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Because it was, um, you know, I just didn't have any, any way of knowing anything. And um, so it, it was really scary. And I was, I didn't realize that all you guys had Instagram. I was only following Bedros. <laughs> so I would only be able to get snippets of yeah. who was Drew Bedros. Oh, you were missing out. The wives are usually stalking all of our Instagrams, watching every second. They're like, looking at the back corner, like, I think that's his elbow. That means he's still there. He hasn't quit yet. He quits. He better not come home. Yeah. I was waking up at three o'clock in the morning seeing if there was a new post from Bedros. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You missed out. Yeah. We, we, we put some secret behind the scenes shots here and there throughout the process, probably a little more now than even, even back then, but that that's cool. So now he, he graduated. What was the first contact you had with him after he graduated? Uh, I think he sent me a text message saying I'm okay and I'm in the van headed to the hotel. Um, but that was still at, I mean, I was counting down the minutes to 75 hours and it was like three hours past that. <laughs> yeah. So. So we might go a little overtime. We get a little excited and we may go beyond. We like to over deliver on yeah. the, the program. So, and then when you finally spoke to him, when he called you, did he, did he call you from the, before the graduation or how did, how did that go? When did he first speak to you? He called me um, when he got to the hotel room. Um, we both got a little emotional. That's the dirt I'm giving you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we both got a little emotional and um, it was just, I was so proud of him. I was just overcome with joy that he was able to accomplish what he did. I'm going to get emotional now. <laughs> um, his first words were, I did it. And, uh, he was glad that I was okay, which was uh, confusing for me, but he was glad that I was, I was okay and that we were okay, which was that's what, just him. What an awesome dude. Like we're out, we're out here beating the hell out of him. He's going through getting tortured and suffering and sacrificing and transforming. And he's worried about if you're okay. That's some, that's some good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. And all right. So now he shows up 
up home the next day or whatever after the graduation, he heads out, heads out back home. What are some of the immediate differences or changes? Like I'm talking about day one. I know some other stuff takes a little time to kind of manifest or grow into. Uh, what were some of the immediate impacts or changes or things you just noticed differently about him, like from day one? Um, well, I noticed that he had lost a lot of weight. <laughs> um, but let's see, because it was so you graduated around Valentine's Day. So I actually flew out to California to meet him. Oh, cool. um, and we went on a, a Valentine's Day date and then we flew back. Um, I, I don't know what the initial change was. Um, confidence, confidence was a big one. Um, just the way he was kind of carrying himself or talking, acting, just was it, did you notice that difference in the confidence? Yeah, I mean, and he was more, I'm going to my notes here, and he was more engaged with us um more loving more caring more um but i mean that kind of took a little bit of time he, i think that he i think it, he struggled a little bit after the project um just in general not i think that everything that you guys went through and 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 the process of, of going through everything kind of, it, 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 he had a little bit of a struggle coming back. Yeah, actually, I remember I spoke to him on the phone a few days after he came back because he, he did call, he called me, told me he was struggling. And it's something that happens. It's a strange thing because you go through the project and you're at such a high level and such high intensity surrounded by such high performers that are having such extreme attention to detail and high standards and expectations and you're like, wow, that's this is like the way this is my people. This is the way I want to live. This is the way I've always should have lived. This is the type of confidence this is where I should have carried myself my entire life. This is where I should stand tall and proud and, and not have so much fear and doubt and uncertainty in myself. And you get that and it's drilled into and ingrained into it becomes part of your character, part of who you are, a part of your identity. And then you go back to whether it's the office or around your, your friends that you're normally hanging out with. And you're like, these people aren't really that high performing or you, you start noticing things about people at work that are that person's really sloppy i never realized it but now after the project yeah. when i had to have everything to the meticulous detail of what corner my patch was on on the velcro and was it exactly at 90 degrees mm -hmm. now i'm seeing this, this person is a slob and that's probably why their performance and our numbers aren't that great not saying that that in, in particular but and then you start being around your friends who just want to hang out and drink and go watch netflix and they don't have to have deep meaningful conversations after you have these deep dives and so like who you really are and you start realizing like i gotta start up, upping my circle a little bit and start leveling these people up with me because this is the world i was in is that is that that's i mean i kind of remember that a little bit from the conversation we had is that kind of where he was at yeah and um he he gets more annoyed with people <laughs> um with people not rising to his level um and you know now that you mentioned it um there were certain people that as soon as he came back he was like i need to limit my circle i need to um, start weeding out the people that I don't like, they're not up to my level. Mm -hmm. I guess they're not up to my standards. And so he started reducing the people in his circle. He did, he did that pretty immediately. Um, awesome. you know, within the first couple of weeks. And on the surface, it sounds like, Oh, wow. That's just someone who thinks they're better than other people. Right. But no, it's, it's someone that's being actually completely selfless because to keep yourself in a situation or environment that's not conducive to growth and, and challenges the way that you're looking to and holding you accountable, you're doing a disservice to yourself, disservice to your family, disservice to them by letting them think that's okay. And, it, and, it, and just kind of appro approving of that. So, yeah, I remember that, that that's a struggle with a lot of guys that when they graduate, because now they're such a high performer in such a short amount of time yeah. and they're ready to make it happen. And they're like, wait a minute, the rest of the world is like so slow. I never realized these people I'm around, or freaking losers and i'm not saying that he said that about his people that's just my terminology but it, it, it yeah that's a, that's a and we we kind of coach them on that as they're leaving the project too like you're going to go back and start noticing a lot of things that like you're going to have this new like spidey sense like a radar that's going to be like mm -hmm. that person doesn't even empty their garbage in like three days or even your neighbors that aren't cutting their lot like things like that you'll start noticing yeah. you never noticed in decades 
because you have this now different keen sense and, and attention to detail. And that so, really irritates him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, yeah. Just talk about it. Um, but, you know, the changes that he made started, I mean, with our circle being what it is now, um, it started influencing the people around us, the changes that he made. Like his brother doesn't drink anymore. His brother started working out and is up to, I think, six miles a day. Wow. Um, I started working out again, which has been a really – big struggle for me. I used to work out all the time, but after I had my little girl, I haven't been able to make that transition back into working out, but now I'm able to do that. And it's, um, you know, I, I want to rise up to his level. I want him to be proud of me the same way that I'm proud of him. And I think that that's, um, how others feel whenever they're in his presence. And are they just noticing that it's just kind of infectious and feeding off it? Or is he like, say his brother, for instance, did he actually tell his brother to start doing this or his brother just kind of fed off of that energy and that now new confidence? He just fed off of it. I mean, and Mike's energy is infectious. Um, You know, the way that he carries himself, the way that he speaks, the, um, you know, just the way that he is now. And, that, and it's carrying awesome. into work, making changes at work as well. He's that's awesome. Not even, not even having to like go and persuade someone, just completely influencing by your actions and by just the way you carry yourself that it has such an impact on people that they're like, you know what? That's that's the kind of dude I want to follow. That's how I want to be. That's a role model. Like he's, you know, portraying a role model to people around him, it sounds like. That's really what it's all about. That's awesome. Absolutely. Good stuff. So what, what would you say to someone in your shoes in the very beginning when you first hear, all right, you're going to go roll around the mud with a bunch of guys out there to fly out to California. You're going to leave me home alone with the kids for, for really five days. And it comes down to it because there's the day, a couple of days of travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you say to a, a, a spouse out there that husbands come to them with this and, you know, having that same sticker shock that this, you know, this is going to cost $12,000 to go play GI. Joe for a few days out in California, what would be some advice or just words that you'd have to say to someone in your shoes that were back then? I would say it's going to be challenging. Um, You're going to get annoyed with how much he talks about the project (laughs) and how um, it's going to take away from your relationship a little bit because you have to sacrifice your your time together so that he can go and work out and you're going to feel like you're a single parent at times. And it's, it's going to be tough, but it's worth it in the end because your relationship improves afterwards because of the person that they come back as the, the more attentiveness, the support that you get, the better communication that you have, um, you know, arguments that we used to have, over small stupid things just would come up over misunderstandings and now our communication has improved since the project and we know to say hey you know this isn't that big of a deal or let's take this a step back and really dive into what the problem actually is or Mm -hmm. I didn't mean it that way (laughs) you know and so your relationship really does improve um after everything's all said and done and and the person that your husband develops into that lifelong um change is totally worth it awesome good stuff good stuff powerful stuff so when, when it comes down to you i mean you said that uh, you know people talk about it. it's only a three-day program why, why would i spend that much money on it I actually just got an email right before we came on here someone saying i can't understand it can you i can't wrap my head around how for three days this could be such an expensive thing or whatever so knowing what you know now and knowing going forward how, how do you see your families and your life and your relationships the future based on this new version that that came back after just a three-day thing like after the project where how do you see the future now with with him well i feel more secure in our relationship i feel more secure in our future i know that mike is going to do everything in his power to make sure that we're successful not only financially Um, but as a couple, as a family, as a family unit, um, Mm -hmm. our, you know, fitness, our lifestyle, I think that 
facing challenges together now is a big thing for us. Mike has, and he wouldn't have said this before, but we run towards challenges. We don't run away from them. And that's something that has changed within me of whenever Mike approaches a challenge or says, hey, there's this opportunity that I'm thinking about. Okay, babe, I'm going to go through this challenge with you. We're going to run towards this together. We're not going to run away from it. And you just become, become more solidified as a couple. And whenever you talk about it being three days, three days for this $12,000, it's not the three days. <laughs> it's the three months prior to the project of you preparing. It's the three days that you're there. And then it's the lifelong commitment after that. So whenever they say, well, I can't imagine just spending the money for the three days. Well, it's not it's not three days. <laughs> it's a lifetime, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100 percent. As long as you're contributing and committed and, you know, sticking to the project creed that we have. So you I mean, there is obviously an impact that's had in your life. So I appreciate you sharing all that information with us and some good stuff in there, some tons of good nuggets in there. I think that could be a huge help to some women out there that are having, you know, str struggles supporting their their husbands in this because we do hear that a lot which is why we started these shows so thank you for joining us on the show here and if you guys need anything you know you have a team now or an, an entire army of project instructors and graduates at your service so if you need anything ever 24 hours a day just let us know all right thanks steve all right awesome thanks again mindy